you are listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series, brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Uptech, and Equa Marketing. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, IELTS Works and Pronox. If you would like to network and share your experience with our podcast guests and other aesthetic industry professionals, join our Facebook or LinkedIn communities by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Today, we're going to be speaking with one of the finest experts in aesthetics. Our host, Jeffrey Richmond, is an award-winning 20-year veteran of the aesthetic industry whose passion led him to co-found the Business of Aesthetics community. Over to you, Jeff. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Business of Aesthetics podcast. We're thrilled today to have a special guest and a little bit different than normal, Mr. Kevin Myers. Kevin comes to us from Monarch Laser in California, although I think now he is blessed <laughs> to be in Hawaii. So Good morning. We, we won't get too jealous of, of, about that, but... Um, Congratulations. I understand you're celebrating your father's 80th birthday. Yep. So he turns 80 actually today. And uh, we brought out uh, my uncle, a couple other friends. And I think there's like 10 of us uh, to celebrate his uh, uh, momentous uh, time of hitting 80. And uh, we're going to have a good time out here and uh, look forward to it. So, but I'm happy to be on this. Uh, thanks for, you know, allowing me to be on it from Hawaii. And uh, I'm in my a uh, condo kitchen here, so it's not as nice as uh, probably uh, some of the uh, golf greens out there. Well, I know uh, uh, golf has uh, been a big connector, but you're a you're a big family man. So your son plays golf, your son plays college golf. Um, you play golf a lot with your father, and I know that's one of those things that's just generationally connected you. And then uh, I've been lucky enough to get to play with you a bunch of times, although you don't, you don't give me the strokes when the strokes are due, but besides <laughs> that, uh, it's always nope. been fun. Nope. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you, for those of you that don't know Kevin, I'm going to let Kevin introduce himself a little bit as well, but I've worked with Kevin for over two decades now, um, really had a business in the Pacific Northwest that I, in many cases, tried to model after um, things that, that Kevin was doing. And in the same token, we were able to connect with each other in so many different ways and talk about the industry. And, and one of the things that I felt got really challenging for me in the industry was transparency and um, having friends in the industry to get to share your stories with and get their stories with and um, had been a just a huge benefit to me. But Kevin has been the owner of medical spas uh, early on in the in the past. Kevin has done distribution of lasers, so selling lasers for manufacturers, uh, both working for the manufacturer and for the last probably decade and a half working as an independent, making his own choices as to what technology he brings in. And then also like the bee in everyone's garden, uh, Monarch Laser does laser rental uh, throughout California, both Northern and Southern California. So they're actually in the operating room or the treatment room with these physicians using these devices. So Kevin, I think your ex your three-dimensional experience is really valuable to this community. So I, I thank you for being here. But will you take a little bit of time and just explain um, uh, Monarch Laser and kind of the evolution of how you got where you are today? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I've been in the industry for about 25 years now. And, uh, you know, I was in uh, sales and really kind of uh, generating, uh, you know, revenue doing that. And then it really ended up kind of uh, organically. I had several of my customers that, A, couldn't afford it, uh, B, just didn't know what kind of equipment they wanted to get. And so we started the laser rental uh, you know, program uh, about 25 years ago, kind of to, to solve that need out there. And we we saw a big need of customers that really wanted to kind of, you know, test it, try it, see what's going on with it. And that's kind of how we started into it. And now it's uh, organically grown to where we uh, we supply all the major institutions, you know, the Kaisers, the Scripps, the Sharp Systems, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, I think it does give us a little different perspective on, on uh, you know, the marketplace and what we see, because we get to see the trends pretty quickly up and down and, you know, and left and right on it. And the other component that I think it makes it nice for us is that 
I mean, I hate to say it, but we do like, you know, I'll give you like a fractional CO2. We probably do more fractional CO2s than anyone in the nation just because of the, uh, the sheer number of cases that uh, our team does. So it gives us a little bit of visualization on, you know, the technology, where the market's going, you know, what, what really has good outcomes. Because unfortunately, in our position, uh, our products have to have really good outcomes to the patient or, you know, our relationship with that physician or medical office ends up being very short. So um, it, it, it's been a really fun ride. I got to tell you, you know, in this industry and you meet guys like Jeff, Jeff, Jeff and I uh, have collaborated for a long time. Um, for those of you, I'm sure you listen to Jeff, a, a extremely smart guy out there that that, uh, you know, we used to call all the time and, and you know, pick each other's brains. How are we going to how we're going to do this? What what do you think about this product? What What's coming to market? So it's been it's been a great relationship. And I, I'm fortunate to say that I've got a lot of those across the country as well as Jeff that, uh, you know, I, I, I know a lot, but I rely on very smart people like Jeff and, and others across the country to kind of give me good insight on, you know, where, where we need to be and what we need to do. So we've been very fortunate uh, and uh, I'm very blessed on a daily basis to be, uh, be here and, you know, and on the call with you, Jeff, and uh, in front of everyone uh, that will kind of download this podcast. Well, awesome. Yeah. The, the good, honest business, uh, goes a long way. And I think that there's a group of reps who have tried to do that their whole careers and have met each other and stuck with each other. So there is some, some of that circle. You, you've, you mentioned physicians not knowing what to buy. And I think we're in a very reactive marketplace where doctors aren't necessarily, I mean, maybe right out of school, they're thinking about their needs. But later, it's more that someone walked in their door and pitched them or created a need or there's some sizzle in the marketplace or maybe social media got their attention. How do you consult with doctors or consult with business owners to make decisions on equipment? And I mean it in this case, Kevin, you know, you and I have seen over the years and more, much more so probably over the last decade, lots of like, let's say, ENT doctors buying fat reduction devices or, you know, like, like, so I see you smiling. So, yeah, I just want to get your comments on, on that. And then how you, how you refer doctors uh, uh, to, to buy, to make good equipment decisions. Well, I think you and I come from the same school and there's, and listen, there are some really good uh, partners out there that uh, I would recommend, you know, talking to that, you know, really are more the consultative sale because really I've been doing this 25 years in the same geography with the same, you know, physician base and doctors and customers and everything across the board. And really my approach has always been, this has got to be a win-win. You've got to do well as a customer. My customers have done, you know, well across the board uh, with the equipment that we've, uh, you know, supplied them. So th that's always been a big thing. And you know, I, I look at it when you kind of think about how to purchase a product, you're going to see a lot of this. I mean, I, I hear this all the time and I get calls all the time from current customers and non-current customers that come to the website that, you know, kind of look us up and figure out what we're doing. And, and they say, you know, should I buy this? And I go, well, you have to ask kind of some basic questions to yourself. Number one, does it work? I mean, you got to, you got to make sure it works. Obviously the, the equipment. So how do you prove that? Um, and, and, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of times you really got to prove it with clinical studies where it's not just, you know, you bring it in your office and you see it and you think it works. You, you, you really got to kind of look at the clinical background and see what really has some, some basis for it. That's number one for me. That's always, you have to have a clinical product. The second thing that's probably as important as a clinical product is, is that product going to generate revenue or pay for itself in the long run? And is it realistic? Because I think what we've seen a trend and Jeff, you and I've talked about this extensively. We've seen a trend where, you know, people are promised, oh, you're going to do a million treatments today and you're going to charge a thousand dollars per treatment and you're going to be a, a zillionaire at the end of the day. Well, you know, first of all, the market doesn't play that way. That 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 doesn't hold true. Number one. Uh, number two, the problem that I always tell and I and, and I think a lot of offices don't even uh, really look at this is, you know, they say, you know, you need to do, you know, a uh, thousand treatments to pay for it. Well, what does a thousand treatments really represent as time into your practice? And what is it really, you know, the resources of your practice? What is it really going to dominate? I mean, if you have to do a thousand treatments in six months, you probably can't even fulfill them. And, you know, I think that my, my background having, uh, you know, own med spas at one point in time, I understand that pretty well. That, that's one of the big questions I think people don't really understand is that 
you know, you really have to look, you know, the time of the room, the staff of the, you know, you have to put in there, you know, just, you know, the front office, just all the back end stuff of what it takes and what, what opportunity cost that really comes with it. So that's really kind of the second thing. And then the third thing is, is a treatment affordable for the customer to come in and actually be able to do it? I mean, you can have this, you know, great product that works. You can have a product that you think makes sense, but does it make sense to the patient or, you know, th will that really translate into them that they're going to get the results? Because I, I also hear these crazy astronomical, like, oh, you come in and spend $10,000 and you're going to look, you know, this, this, and this. And it's really not um, affordable to the patient because then that becomes a very small pool that you're able to pull from. And you really then, you know, are very limited of what your return on investment is. So for me, those are kind of the three things I look at. And then the last thing is the technology have any longevity with it. I mean, if it's a, you know, a one-year product, you know, I mean, again, because I'm buying, you know, equipment and lasers and whatnot, just like everyone else out there, I have to look at what kind of longevity is it going to have some legs that, you know, patients will be looking for it in two, three, four, five years. And if it doesn't, it really has to make me think twice about what I'm going to add to the practice or add to our, our um, rental pool, just to make sure that it makes sense for our customers and for us. And when you say if patients are going to want it, I think you're referring to your existing patients in your in your practice because when we go out into the marketplace into this huge pool of patients that we're all competing for there's an expense to bringing those patients to bring the patients that are already in my practice there's there's very little expense to introduce something new so i think it's great advice i mean the if you build it they will come concept doesn't really work in in aesthetics no and and this is many years ago so i haven't i haven't run med spots for many 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 years but we did study you know i i have a uh, economics background so i i'm always kind of looking at like you know what what's the return on investment and we actually looked at what our acquisition cost per patient was at that point and it really varied between 200 and 500 dollars just to get the patient to walk to the door mm -hmm. it wasn't even to to do a procedure that was just to get them in the door and that and then you know, you have a certain percentage of attrition on that patient. So now that cost probably even goes up a little bit higher. So I really was, you know, very focused on what my acquisition cost on a new patient was. And obviously the patients in the practice are very inexpensive to get, especially um, you probably have their database and your market to them. And, you know, they, they, they trust and follow you. So th that's easier, but to get a new patient, there is a pretty hefty acquisition cost. And, you know, with the noise going on in today's environment, I think it's probably even more than the $200. I bet it's like more three to $500, uh, depending on the practice and where they're located. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I have not done the analysis at Thrive for a few years, but a few years ago, we were a little over $300 yeah. per, per patient acquisition. And that's and that's including our existing patients. So that's every patient. So if I look at new patient, then it may, may be higher, like new somebody that had never come to us. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a challenge. I think, what about, uh, what about the pricing on equipment? When you talk about affordability, we, we've seen, you, you and I have seen prices, I mean, quadruple quintuple maybe since we've been in this industry some of it is false um some of it's like a false pricing i don't know how to explain it but they put a really high ceiling so that there's lots of room for negotiation others will sell at that high ceiling i remember when i was in israel you know 25 years ago i went to an arab sook and i you know, and it's known that you're supposed to negotiate. And I don't remember what I was buying, you know, a, a, a <laughs> beanie or who knows what I was buying, but let's say it was five bucks. And, and I just thought, okay, it's five bucks. So I said, he said five bucks. And I said, okay. So I give him five. Bucks. No, 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 no. I'll give you two for five bucks. Or he <laughs> felt bad because he expected that I was going to negotiate, you know? Yeah. And in this world today, I think there's an expectation of negotiation. I want to get your, you know, you sell you, I'm in hundreds of millions of dollars of, of equipment and, and product. I want to get your sense on how you handle that. And, and also manufacturers are coming to you with these really high inflated prices and you have to 
deal with that as well. But I remember towards the end of my career, just feeling funny about, you know, giving a 50% discount every time I sold something, right? It'd make you feel funny. Well, I think there's, you're a hundred percent right, Jeff. I think there's, there's been artificial, I, I think there's also been, let's be honest. I think the cost of, you know, we see it every day in the newspaper, inflation, the cost of new, but there are some, some uh, costs that are being transferred onto the product and to the end user. And that, that's a hundred percent. I kind of look at it in a different way. I mean, I listen, I, I think there's a lot of these crazy prices that are being thrown out there and the, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar product, but the, the thing I always have to evaluate is what is the real return on investment? And what does that mean? That means what is a real patient going to pay you? What is it realistic? How many patients you're really going to be able to bring into that practice uh, or your practice to, to really make that, make that worthwhile? I mean, if the product's a million dollars and you know, it's a hundred thousand dollars of treatment and you can get it then. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Right. I mean, but if it's, you know, $200 and the product's a million dollars, then it really is a difficult return on investment at that. So I really am more focused on, on how that return on investment really translates to the practice and translate to anyone that makes that purchase, because that really is at the end of the day, the crutch. And I think it's also more so um, the inflation of the product, but also what, what customers were being told the real treatment price is going to be. I mean, I've heard outrage. Oh, you're going to charge five thousand dollars for this treatment, and I know the market space because we're in you know 150 offices a week, and that same treatment is really more like uh, you know four hundred dollars a treatment. So you know that, that that return on investment, those numbers don't really equate and work out very well. So I think that's the true uh, metrics that everyone really needs to look at: is what is really going to be the return on investment? And then again, as I said. If it's a ten thousand dollar treatment or a hundred thousand dollar treatment, that's great, and you got a million dollar. Okay, so that means you don't have a lot of patients. But how many of those? Pa- how many patients do you have in your practice, or can you get that will that can afford that? So then you got to look at that metric. So those are the things that make a big difference out there for what the ma- metrics are. Still, you don't want to leave money on the table. No, right. No, well, listen, Exactly right. And I think that's the the fine line. You know, in grad school, you know, they have this metric where you kind of go, you raise your 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 cost and then you you lower the number of uh, opportunities. But there becomes a, a, a kind of a, a a point where it makes the most sense where, you know, you can raise the cost, but but it makes enough sense that your return on investment goes. So, you know, it, it is a fine line, but I, I suggest to everyone it's a pretty easy pen. You know, J- Jeff would always do this all the time. He said, I just pull out a piece of paper and a pencil. and I just start working the math. I mean, work the math backwards. And if the math doesn't work backwards, it doesn't work. Right. What if the math works, but I can still save 20,000 hours on the unit? In, in the sense of negotiating? Yeah, in the sense of negotiating. For I mean, sure. how does, how does I, think, I think it's harder for somebody like Monarch Laser that is transparent with their customers, that's been around for 20 something years, that doesn't have a urgency in the sale every time something's bought you know it's if you buy it by the end of the week every time it it gets harder for us because um you you are playing by the rules you do respect your customers so how do you give advice to them like i can't give you a 50 percent discount because i haven't inflated my price a hundred percent you know i i said this and i say this all the time and i say this every time i talk to a customer pretty much i say listen the best customer for us is the most educated. At the end of the day, the better educated our customers are, the better it is for us because they're going to make a good decision. And we really evaluate products. You know, we're, we're very fortunate, knock on wood, we've been very fortunate that we get to, to partner up with manufacturers, with different um, vendors out there. And, you know, we get kind of to pick and choose uh, the cream of the crop. And we, you know, I look at my analysis when I look at a new product that I'm bringing on, whether it's for the rental side or the sales side, I look at it and say, you know, is this going to be a good return on investment for our customer base? Because I'm not here today. I'm here for 10 more years. So I got to make sure that I can do right by my customer today and right by my customer, you know, for 10 years. So I'm always kind of looking at that scenario. So, you know, I really think the customer needs to look at that and really be a savvy and make make good educated decisions, not just, you know, I, I hear a lot of times and, and my number one frustration is, I'll be honest with you, is, is I've talked to many of good friends of mine and they go to a, an event that some manufacturer puts on. And then listen, they're, these manufacturers are great at putting hype up there and doing these things, but you know, really they kind of get caught up in the emotion and you know, really need to sit back and just say, okay, this is why I'm buying it. This is kind of return on investment I'm going to buy with, 
and, and, and make that happen. I mean, that to me is kind of more important than just about anything else when you're in your purchase decisions out there. It, I agree. It's a lot easier when a customer comes to you with some sense of what their needs are, what their budget is, and you know what they're looking for and how to accomplish it. And, and maybe they need your help with staging. Maybe it's, hey, let's bring you this one in now because it's going to uh, generate more revenue and it will help you with your next purchase. Maybe the next purchase is a something you don't see is going to drive a lot of money, but you really want it in your practice because it's it makes sense to have. So you you know, there's a lot of different things uh, and a lot of different ways that that we can handle that. Do you, Kevin, you talked about bringing on um, new stuff. I know you were one of the first in the country to start dealing with the uh, exosomes. Mm-hmm. But, and I don't know much about that. That's been the last couple of years. I know we started, um, you and I knew about PRP early, early on, and really we're getting educated about it and, and helping educate the market before. I mean, I think when it was still a little bit of, you know, snake oil had that perception as snake oil because it, and now it's so widely accepted. It works terrifically. Um, So can you share with us like how you, some of the new things that you're finding out in the the marketplace and the, the trends that you're seeing in the market? Well, it's interesting. It's funny. You're, you're, the timing is probably pretty uh, perfect because you know part of what I perceive my job and my my role today and what I do is is really to kind of go out there and search out new products, see the validity of the new products. You know, what kind? Of, as I said, I I do the same thing. What kind of quality of the new products? You know, who's behind them? What they're doing? Why they're doing? I was just in Korea for basically 10 days, kind of looking at some new products. I actually went to uh, two of the major Korean uh, shows, and one was on based on exosomes, which, again, if anyone doesn't know, Korea is uh, kind of a one of the leaders uh, outside the U.S. of new products and new technologies coming to the market, and you'll see a lot of them come out there. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of look at it, as I said, the same exact way I think our customers should look at it. I do a lot of research. I really try to read up on it, see what the product is, what does it make sense, is the science there? I mean, does it really have a basis for science? Because I'm just not in the business of selling snake oil. It's just not my, it's not my game and, you know, not, not worth it to me at that point in time. So that's number one. And then the second thing is, again, I look at the affordability to our, to our customers, but also to their patients and where, where it really falls into. So we've been fortunate to be able to partner up with some really wonderful vendors out there. Um, you know, as, as, you know, we've talked about in the past, exosomes are hot. That's kind of been the, the, the new, the new market out there. Really. They're kind of the smallest particles that you're going to find in your body that are, you know, your, your stem cell based, but these, these things are all topical now, which has been great. Uh, I've actually had a topical application for my hair, uh, Lack of hair, Jeff. I don't have great hair like you, so I've uh, I, I'm trying to uh, to get some back on there. I'm seeing some improvement. Um, PRP has been great too. We've been very involved with PRP for for many many years, and uh, you know I think that's a great one because it is your own body's product that you're um, you know putting back into your system to help you know heal yourself. Um, but I also believe uh, you know it's uh, I've had a couple of good friends who are well known uh, physicians. And I was getting PRP in my head and I, it wasn't working as great. And I asked them why not? And they said, well, Kevin, you're you're over 50. So your PRP probably stinks right now. So maybe you should get something more, that works a little bit more potently. So, you know, I've taken their 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 word for it. And then we've been fortunate to get into different technologies out there. We've been uh, looking across the board at, uh, you know, different things. Like I think the, the hot new ones are, you know, especially right, right now. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many of my customers come to us and say, you know, people sitting on a Zoom call look at their face, and I look at my face, and I go, God, I can, I can fix this and do this. And now we're getting a big uh, bump from Zoom in the last two years uh, because people don't like what they're looking at. So uh, for us, we've had a, a great success with some RF microneedling, um, being able to do a lot of different things. We also have uh, just recently brought on a new uh, Q switch and Pico uh, laser setup, which has been great. Which is uh, you know, kind of revolutionary on the uh, the Pico market. So we've been we've been very fortunate. So I, my job is, I think, going around and just making sure I kind of do as much education as possible. And again, I rely on guys like you. I rely on, guy, on a lot of the physicians across the country to, hey, what's new? Because they they hear it. They hear it from their colleagues internationally. They hear it from the colleagues in the U.S. What's new? And so I, I really am trying to tap into that. That's why I go to a lot of trade shows to see what's out there. It's just, it's a great way to educate yourself and keep yourself as educated as possible. 
And I, the nuance of these technologies, you only get once there's a couple hundred of them out there. So as I love the studies and people need to have research, but I also, we, you and I have seen studies that are done. Uh, I remember the one, I can't remember the company, but it was done for acne, but it was done at the U S Naval center mm -hmm. in uh, and the device was said not to be painful. Well, if you're in the Navy and you don't want to cry amongst your friends, I guess it's not painful. But if you're a normal human being, it was a very painful procedure. But only when the product got out in market did they figure, um, you know, that stuff out. Oh, 100%. And it's funny because um, I, I, I all the time understand that I am uh, focused on getting treatments too. I, I think, uh, listen, I, I tell everyone, if you're going to look at it, you got to get a treatment. And so you have to make sure that uh, you understand that and that you are, um, you know, you, you have to understand what the patient's going to go through and what, 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 you know, what's the, how much downtime, what, what is it, what are they going to look like? How are they going to go home? What do you need to do for them? So that, that's a big deal uh, for me. So I always try to get, or at least feel it or have someone that I know uh, treat me with it. So I make sure I get a, a comfortable feeling on it. So the rental customers and your sales customers, you you mentioned RF Microneedle. You, you've been selling RF Microneedle for a long time. Mm -hmm. I know you were involved uh, uh, with Lutronic when I was, when yep. some of that technology was first coming out. There's been improvements within technology and, and picosecond technology as well. But also I see this trend to moving towards adjunctive treatment where we are doing it with an exosome or we are doing it with PRP. Are you seeing research and development in products? Are you seeing addition of other things, all of the above? What's, what, what are the trends? You know, all of the above. I, I think you and I have talked about it for many years. I, I am not a one and done type of guy. I think you have to have a treatment protocol. You have to have uh, kind of tandem treatment. So, you know, right now, our 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 best thing that we see across the board are, is doing RF microneedling with exosomes. I think that is a win-win scenario all across the board. And I I actually think exosomes with a lot, you know, topically post, uh, you know, fractional CO2 or uh, microneedling or whatever modality they have in the practice really works out. But I, that's where I think where you really take and improve your practice and improve the outcome is by doing uh, multiple modalities uh, in one setup. And I, again, you'll, you, it's funny because I think I saw a talk by, I can't remember who did the talk, but someone uh, most recently at one of the one of the meetings did a wonderful talk and they said you know 10 years ago i said i combined this and this together and i was told i was crazy and now that's kind of the hottest thing now so that that really is where our generation and and the market is driven is that you're really doing a lot more combination treatments to make sure that you know they get the outcomes that the patients are looking for what, what does it cost uh, to add exosomes after a co2 or an rf you know the cost uh, our, our product is very affordable the cost of the to the office is about 100 bucks um, so a lot of our offices, if they're doing a, you know, a large let's say, fractional CO2 or a RF microneedling, they're charging, a, you know, several thousand dollars, then they throw it in for free. But a lot of them will put it in with like, you know, post uh, microneedling and, you know, they char upcharge 300 bucks and take their microneedling costs uh, to the patient from 300 to 350 sure. up to six to 700 bucks. And that really well, becomes it, a great return on investment. It really does turn it into a procedure that way. Yep. So now you're marketing something. Um, yeah, I would think with CO2 or RF microneedle, it would be easy just to add the $100 into the cost and then say it's included, right? But you could just up the cost by 100 So RF microneedle, is it so different over the last 10 years? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, dramatically different. So you know, the market's changed a lot. And we, we're fortunate, again, as I said, we, we've got kind of this uh, revolutionary product, uh, Silfermex, uh, I'll kind of put the name out there, it's kind of our product, sorry. But you know, the, the nice thing is it's, it's less painful, it's a faster treatment. They also have pulse wave technology, which helps you target different structures in the skin, which allows you to do, you know, we're seeing nice uh, resolution in some, uh, you know, a pigment and that kind of thing with an RF microneedling that no one ever thought about. And so, you know, but but here's here's the deal. We got it, I, you know, I heard all these wonderful things. I read the stories and I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. And then I put it in a couple of hands of some very prominent physicians and they got the same results. And then I said, okay, now, now, now we've got something here. Now, now we really have got a, a a pretty hot market. And for us, you know, knock on wood, we've been, uh, what is it now, just over a year and a half. And uh, we've done a wonderful job. The team has been fantastic. So it's been, uh, 
it's been a good fun ride for us. And I think this product's had a lot more life because there's a lot more technology coming out with it. So um, I think the Silver Max is here for you know a good long time. Well, and there's a lot of practices like mine that have, you know, a, an older RF machine. I think Pronox gave my old RF a lot of legs in terms of still being able to use it. But at what point do I, I mean, how do I make that decision that it's time to jump off my horse and buggy and go with the Ferrari, <laughs> you know? Well, the- it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's, I had a customer just call me the other day and they, they made this comment to me, which I thought was very interesting. They said, listen, I love my 2007 Mercedes Benz, but I want the 2022. So it's not that it didn't work. It's not that it's not a great car. It's not that that product at that point in time was not a great product. It's just they want the latest and greatest because it has better bells and whistles. It's easier. It's faster. It's you know safer. It's you know more productive. I mean, just like everything out there. So you know, it was really a, that was a good comment to me from one of my customers that ended up you know calling me up saying that they wanted to upgrade to the new the new version, which gives them. And by the way, the other thing is you're also looking at uh, adding more treatment uh, protocols out there, which then uh, adds more return on investment, which then adds better to the bottom line, which makes it a better product for you. So, you know, there is always that transition. I mean, we can't, you can't look back and say, I've had a piece of equipment for 10 years. I'm going to keep it for 10 years just because unfortunately it's like, I always talk about the computer. You're always upgrading your computer every couple of years just because it works better, faster, safer, easier. And that's what our patients are, are, are asking for. So that's really kind of where, you know, I think most of the patient population is looking for to have less downtime, better results, less pain, you know, the, the whole kit and caboodle. That product you guys sell nationally, you've used this rep group, the relationships that you've had all over the country for decades. You've picked some of the best reps in the yeah in the the country and you've been able to do that nationally. I know also you realized within the, the picosecond market, that technology is super underwhelming. I think a lot of the people that have bought old, older picosecond technologies weren't happy with it. And nationally you built a relationship with laser optic, um, which is a terrific, they're a great supporter of what we're doing at business of aesthetics they're really a, a nerdy company that has great science, but they have some revolutionary um, products and you're distributing those nationally as well. Yeah, we were fortunate enough to get to meet up and, and uh, work with, with the uh, people at Laser Optech. And I, I got to tell you, I was in Korea, went to the manufacturing process and it's kind of interesting. So, you know, if you ask, when we first looked at the Pico, the Pico market has been um, a difficult market across the board because I think it was overpromised and underdelivered from the get go. And so, if I talk to a lot of my customers, the number one thing you know, I asked three, you know, I asked the questions. And I said, "Well, why didn't you get into it?" And basically, three answers were consistently across the board. Number one, it was too expensive. Number two, they're not interested in doing tattoo removal, which again we had to kind of reeducate them on that one. And then um, number three, the equipment always broke down. I mean, that was just you know kind of inherently the, the top three issues that uh, we we addressed. So then when uh, the laser rock tech kind of approached us to, you know, work with us on the nation wide ba- basis, you know, we really had to kind of dive into that. And the interesting thing about the laser rock tech, which really people don't even talk about it, which is kind of interesting is that, is that they developed this product more for the industrial side initially than medical. They were not going into the medical side. They were on the industrial side. In fact, they work with uh, a lot of the major manufacturers and players in Korea, i.e. Samsung, other one, developing lasers for that. And so, you know, you, you imagine Samsung producing chips and whatever, and you're using a laser to work on that. And, and if it breaks down, that's a pretty costly investment. So they had to make these robust uh, pieces of equipment. So, you know, we've been very excited that not only does the product work very well and has some unique uh, delivery of energy, but it's also more robust. It's a smaller footprint because the way they redesigned this, they didn't they didn't take parts off the shelf and put them together. And then the last thing that to me that that really kind of you know sets it apart is that it is a very stable product out there. I mean, most picos have been very unstable. You move them, whatever it is, and they have a real problems. So, you know, for us, that's been a wonderful scenario, and uh, we're we're extremely excited. And, and also the price point. It, it it's it's much more affordable out there. So that that's made it uh, a much better. Uh, uh, well, you you made it affordable. I give you credit because I think another distributor could have taken that, and made it a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar laser, and then discounted it. And you you chose not to do that. Yeah, that's not our business model. I just think that's uh, listen. I, I'm not going to listen. Anyone can do what they want to do, and that's fine. And I just think listen, we we have to offer 
uh, affordable, uh, re reproducible products out there that are that are good for the practice because that really helps our market space overall and helps our customer base. And really, a good customer, I want all of our customers to succeed because I'll, I'll be right up front. Uh, if I sell you something great today, I want to sell you something great five years from now. And if I do that, then I've accomplished what I'm, my goal is. So that, and that's what our teams go across the country. And you're right. I, I went out there and, and really found, you know, not only people that are very uh, smart and, uh, you know, good with it, but they're consultative sailors. They, they go out there and they really want to help their practices, you know, develop and build and grow and be there for the long term. And that's, that's my mantra. That's kind of what we're, what we're all about. Kevin, I could sit here and talk to you all day. <laughs> I've done it before, but I know you've got important things to do. I want to give people the opportunity, if you have never worked with Monarch Laser, if you're looking anywhere in the country, if you're looking for a consultant, somebody to talk to, somebody to help you figure out strategy, Monarch would be a great place to do that. If you're in California, you want Laser Rental, anywhere in the state, Monarch would be a great company for you. If you're a um, manufacturer or um, looking to bring your product into the United States or get it promoted to a number of people, then Monarch may be good for you as well. So Kevin, will you share your information if people want to reach out to you and or reach out to sure. someone at Monarch? Well, my, my email is very easy. It's kevin at monarchlaser.com. Uh, but we also have a wonderful inside uh, staff. I've got several uh, office staff and managers and marketing team. But so you can always email us at info at monarchlaser.com. Or the other one is you can call our 866 number, which is 866-599-5570. And we've got Shannon, Richard, Catherine, Diana in-house that will answer any questions and help you out and, and can always get to me too. So, you know, feel free to reach out and uh, I love to talk to anyone. And listen, this is all about relationships. This is all about all of us being uh, more educated and better at what we do. And uh, that's really, you know, my focus here. Terrific. Well said. And it's why I was excited to have you on. I appreciate a transparent look into buying, decision-making, and just some of the business of aesthetics. Uh, great conversation with Kevin Myers, CEO, founder at Monarch Laser, and really uh, sound advice for our community. So Kevin, I thank you for joining us today and happy birthday to your father. Thank you, Jeff. I got to go. He, he already went left here, so I got to go catch him and figure out where he is for his birthday. But I appreciate and And Jeff, I, I appreciate you guys and the, the platform here, because I think this is a great platform to share ideas. I love watching the podcast. I mean, I, I got to tell everyone, if you don't watch him, you're, you're missing out because it's a really good way to educate yourself uh, across the board on, on all different subjects. I mean, that's a great thing about this is not really singularly focused. It's it's across the board just to make us all better. And as I said, the better, better educated we are, the better we're going to be. With that, we'll leave you. Thank you for the Business of Aesthetics community. Join our Facebook group. I think Kevin is on our Facebook group, so you can reach yep. him that way as well. Kevin's on LinkedIn. Um, reach out to us. Thank you so much. Kevin, go low and enjoy your day. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series. Brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing and silver sponsors Eilis, Works, and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetics business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? Head on over to www.businessofaesthetics.org slash podcast dash show and apply to be featured as a guest on the show. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music or wherever you listen. If you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers, join our Facebook group or LinkedIn group by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Thank you and have a great day.